श्री के राम मोहन नायडू जी थैंक यू मैडम चेयरपर्सन फॉर गिविंग मी द ऑपरचुनिटी टू स्पीक ऑन दिस इंपॉर्टेंट सब्जेक्ट मैडम एजुकेशन इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सेक्टर्स इफ यू हैव टू लुक एट द प्रोग्रेस एंड ग्रोथ ऑफ अ नेशन हाउ अ नेशन बिहेव्स टुमारो डिपेंड्स ऑन हाउ मेनी एंड हाउ वेल वी एजुकेट टुडे मैडम इफ हेल्थ लुक्स आफ्टर द वेल बीइंग ऑफ वन पर्सन एजुकेशन लुक्स आफ्टर द वेल बीइंग ऑफ द होल सोसाइटी एंड एजुकेशन विल हेल्प अस टू फाइट पॉवर्टी डिस्क्रिमिनेशन equality and other problems that the society faces on a daily basis madam in looking at the importance of education and if we just look at the concluded covid-19 pandemic and the ensuing lock, uh, lockdown it has caused serious disruptions to the education sector and in india over 1.5 million schools closed down due to the pandemic and also affecting 286 million children from pre primary to secondary levels this is in addition to the 6 million children who were already out of school prior to the covid-19 madam the inequalities in the education sector between government and low budget private schools on one hand and rich private schools on the other between rural and urban schools they've all come to the forefront during the pandemic and only a handful of urban private schools could adopt online teaching methods low income private and government schools had completely shut down for not having access to e-learning solutions the students from these schools in addition to the missed opportunities for learning no longer have access to healthy meals during this time and are also subject to economic and social stress madam i'd like to point out some specific stats one according to the aser report in 2019 which was re uh, released in 2020 only 16% of children in class 1 can read the text at the prescribed level while almost 40% cannot even recognize the letters and the urban literacy rate today is 85% whereas the rural literacy is at 65 69% the ministry of education has allocated 93224.31 crores which seems to be a decrease of 6.13% over the previous year this is 2.67% of the whole union budget and in the previous budget we had at uh, uh, we had 99300 crores allocated which was 3.2% budget madam with these uh, statistics i would like to point out that the national economic uh, education policy which has come out it is very very comprehensive and it was very appreciated of the central government but the government should also prepare definite time schedules with specific dates for achievement of different tasks and goals as provided in nep and in 2020 there has to be a clear road map on the implementation schedule of provisions given in the national education policy and even the ministry itself has agreed that for the national education policy to be implemented completely there has to be 6% of the gdp spending on education whereas right now we see that it is only 2.3% so if we have to take national education policy seriously i would recommend that from the central government and also it is has to take the step so that the states also follow them that at least minimum spending of 6% is ensured in the spending of the gdp and also one important aspect that seem to be missing from the national education policy is the sex education we have been speaking about the problems that the women face day in and day out and every single day we have been talking about problems in the parliament also and every time we have been looking at case by case whenever something horrible hap happens uh, to women in this country we kind of get emotional and speak on the issue but the root cause has to be teaching the children of this nation how to behave the gender rights the gender equality gender sensitization and sex education in the curriculum itself and i would have appreciated if the national education policy has a mention of this but i would uh, definitely like to put it in the notice of the central minister that it will definitely be included and proper budget is also ensured so that sex uh, sex education is properly implemented at the right level madam another important problem that we observed during the covid crisis is regarding the private schools and the teachers who are working in them private schools almost 50% of indian students study in private schools madam we can't ignore that sector though we see that it's in the private sector and even the uh, uh, students studying in the private schools have been exponentially increasing over the last 2 years due to the shutdown of schools during pandemic the financial health of low budget private education institutions has deteriorated leading to many private teachers being laid off or not being paid salaries many moved on to different professions and it was very very sad to see what kind of work they were subjected to do during the covid crisis and some of them were even pushed 
to committing suicide also at this point. To avoid this kind of scenario in the future, a separate budget allocation and a scheme is needed to revive the financial condition of low budget private schools and provide certain pre, uh, protection to private school teachers also, madam, because they are contributing towards this educational sector on a large. And also coming to the state of Andhra Pradesh, I will have very specific, I'll conclude in one minute, very specific recommendations. We are sanctioned AIMS, IIT, NIT, IAM, ISAR, Central University, Petroleum University, Agricultural University, and IIIT under the AP Reorganization Act of 2014. And out of these nine institutions, only eight have been started. The remaining one has to be started. And also, during the previous uh, uh, government under the leadership of Chandrababu Naidu Garu, all these institutions were provided land so that the permanent campuses can be built. But my request to the Honorable uh, Minister right now is that for opera uh, operationalizing these institutions, we need approximately 11 thousand crores so that the permanent buildings are taking place and all this but we have not got enough funds in this budget so i would request him to go back and look at proper funding for the educational institutions which have been promised to andhra pradesh especially the one in uh, jntu in anantapur only 60 uh, allocation was 60 whereas the uh, it's it in the revised estimates it shows as 4.80 madam one point ma and also, uh, I've seen that other MPs have also raised this, which is regarding the Kendri Vidyalayas. I would definitely uh, support the uh, request that I put in. We need more seats allocation for Kendri Vidyalayas. And specific to my constituency, I would like to request the Central Minister to open another Kendri Vidyalay in my constituency in Palasa region so that many of the people who are working in central institutions can benefit from this. Thank you very much, Madam.